Hello everybody and welcome back to Learning GMS2. I'm Driftwood and in this episode we're going to learn how to make a camera that follows the player. Um, we're going to make another object uh, that'll have the viewport follow that object and so that the camera can scroll smoothly around. Um, and we're also going to uh, learn how to lock the player inside the game. Like lock them inside the, the borders of the map so the player can't um, just go off of the map. If you see uh, right here we can just fly right off the map and that's not it's probably not something you want to be able to do right so I've taken the lessons that we've uh, if you're following along I, like I said I'm gonna make these tutorials modular so you don't have to like follow every tutorial to you're not gonna fall behind if you miss a tutorial maybe that's something you already know how to do so you can skip that tutorial and continue on this will be several projects so I've taken the lessons that we've already learned how to do in this project uh, and created a new project. And in that project, it's the same thing basically, except I put a little theme to it and I've taken it to, I've taken out some of the things and added some different things. So let's go ahead and look at that. This is going to be my little, one of the first crappy games that we're going to make is a little space shooter. So um, we'll get into a longer video uh, next time. But in this video, um, the, what we're going to do is uh, use the viewport so all you have to do is select the map your that your your player is going to be on and then you'll go to the properties down here <clears throat> and this first width and height is the size of the map not the size of the screen so this is the size of our background so that's the size of the map that I've selected um, we're going to make sure that persistent is unchecked clear display buffer is unchecked um, we don't need any creation code, and the order of your objects shouldn't matter unless you've got something crazy going on, but you can toggle those right there. We're going to click on Enable Viewports, so it's going to um, use the viewports. We're going to say Viewport 0, and then we're going to click on Visible, and it's going to show you the box of the viewport right there. So the first thing you're going to see is the camera properties, and this is going to be how zoomed in do you want the game to be. And then the second thing is viewport properties. So this is basically the size of the, the resolution of the game itself. So our map size is controlled up here. Our um, camera, what, how big our, what our camera looks on the map is this size. And the size of this, the actual resolution of the game is right here. So what I've done is I've taken uh, half of the viewport properties and I've set that value to the camera properties. So the screen's going to be 1280 by 720 and we're going to actually... Uh, I, I've sort of changed it a little bit so maybe we'll try 360 make it in half. That might be fine. That'll make it more of a widescreen but you can change this around so play with these numbers to get the kind of camera scroll that you want. I may even want to change this some more so let's probably go... Um, let's try 500 and 500 and make it like a, just a uh, more of a box so that we can see all four angles at the right size so we can change our, our camera properties right there then what we're going to be doing is select the player that we're going to be following we'll do that first and, and then um, I'll show you what that looks like and you can see that our sprites look a little stretched out because we're not using the same aspect ratio um, you know we're using a 16 by 16 and then we're zooming those up so it looks a little funny right because we're using 1280 by um, 720 that's a 16 by 9 aspect ratio but our our camera ratio is one for one right 500 500 so that looks stretched out so maybe that's not something we want to go for so let's try to go um, half of each of those so let's go 640 by 360 so now our camera is exactly half of our screen's resolution. We could also do a thousand and thousand and it will stretch the the camera. It'll look uh, it'll look right, you know, if we do a thousand, a thousand, five hundred, five hundred, it'll be more of a box. Um, but keep, you can play around with those numbers to change the camera around and make it look however you want. But let's create a new object and this is going to be object smooth camera and you call it whatever you want whatever naming convention you, you want it to have. You're going to select it to be visible, but it doesn't actually need to be visible at all. Um, so that doesn't matter, to be honest, because we're not going to give it a sprite. We're going to just drag this camera onto the map, 
and we're going to give it one event. So we'll add event, add a step event, and we're going to say x plus equals, in parentheses we're going to go object underscore player dot x, or whatever the name of your the, the object that the person, the player is going to control, so the player makes sense, minus x times 0 0.1 in line. Same thing for the y, we're going to go y plus equals object underscore player dot y minus y times 0 0.1 in line. Now all you have to do then is go to your map and drag and drop the smooth camera on the map. I already have it so I don't need two of them. And then you're going to go to the object that the camera is following and instead of the player we're going to have it follow the smooth camera or the smooth scroller. And let's take a look at that now. So you can see that the aspect ratio is a little bit better. It kind of fits. We can see that the the sprites are stretched out because we've made them bigger. Uh, you know, it's 16 by 16 pixel, but we've multiplied their size. Um, so um, it looks right to me. You know, it, we could probably even zoom out a little bit more. But instead of just zooming out, what we'll do is make all the sprites smaller. We're also going to change that sound effect I made. Um, so let's talk about how to keep the player inside the boundaries. Right, because in that at the beginning, I showed you what if you don't do this, the player is going to be able to walk right off the map. <clears throat> so on the object player, you can create a new object for this if you want to, but you don't actually have to. So let's go to our workspace and double click on object player. And here's a little bit of code to um, let the player be locked inside of the map. Now this code will be different depending on the size of your sprites. So, and how much you're zooming and everything. So, my sprite is 16 by 16. You can see the size of it right there. So you wanna double that size. Um, basically, you can put it to whatever number you want. But the higher the numbers that you put in here are gonna be the bigger the border around the map is going to be. So the reason why I'm doing double the size is because I'm making the size of my sprite bigger. Um, so we can change that, actually. We can say image x scale 2, and then this will give us a bigger border. While we're at it, we'll change the size of all of the other things as well. We'll change the laser beams to be just one. We'll change the frigates, the enemy ships, to be two. So we're making all of these a little bit smaller. So they're actually 32 by 32. On animator should be... This one scales up. So what we're gonna do is change this number to two since we changed the others. If you were following along, you know what I'm doing. If not, you can ignore that step. And let's go ahead and run the game now. And you'll see that the player will be unable to run off the map or fly off the map. So now it looks a little bit better because our sprite's a little bit smaller. So are, are the other things. But if we try to go off the map, where I'm holding left here, and I'm not, or I'm actually holding A for left, because I'm using WASDA movement, <clears throat> and it's not letting me off the map. So we've got that little bit of a border right there, right? So if you increase those numbers, which we'll get back to, let's look at the object player one more time, we'll go over it. If you increase these numbers, um, that'll give you a bigger border. So let's look at the code itself. We're making four conditional statements, and since we're only applying one Thing, we're only going to do one thing in each conditional statement. We don't actually have to format them with like a, a bracket and an inner and then another bracket. You know, but that would work the same. But to make it a little, to look, make it look a little bit nicer uh, and, sh and to simplify our code a little bit, we're just going to do conditional statement. If X, since we're on the object player, if, like I said at the beginning, you could put this on another object, but if you do put this on another object, you have to do this, obj underscore whatever your player object is named, dot x, and then you have to go obj underscore player, you know, right there, and do the same thing for all of that. So it makes sense to put this on your player, otherwise you're just going to be typing obj underscore player dot on all of these things, so eight times you'll be typing that. So it makes sense to put it right there. We're saying if x, the player's x, is uh, less than or equal to 32 then change the X to 32 so if he goes this far he's actually you don't even see him move past it because that same step it's moving him so it creates like a border uh, and we're gonna say if X is greater than or equal to room underscore width minus 32 
then x equals room width minus 32. And we do the same thing for the y. If y is less than or equal to 32, y equals 32. So if it gets beyond that point, set it back to this point. So we're not adding, um, we're not adding or subtracting a value, we're setting the value by saying y equals. Um, so it's actually teleporting the player. If they get one pixel behind it, it puts them back. And it, you don't see them jar around because we're using the same, we're using equal here. If you took out these equals, then you might see them go one pixel left and, move, and then go right, or one pixel right and then go left. And so that's why we use equal, greater than equal, less than equal to. And the last thing, if uh, y is greater than equal to room height minus 32, then y equals room height minus 32. And that's pretty much it. Really simple uh, uh, video, like a tip and tricks video. A couple things, how to use viewports, how to make a smooth scrolling camera, and how to keep the player inside of the map. So hopefully you like this uh, learning GMS2 um, tutorial. If you did, consider giving this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're interested in learning more Game Maker Studio 2. Um, if you're interested in more tutorials, I'm planning to make a lot more. And I also have a lot of RPG Maker MV tutorials if you're into that sort of thing. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for more and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.